let us now compare the uncertainty estimation approaches that we have seen. They are all combined with their pros and cons and properties into this slide. So, if we start by the modeling approach, then as you probably noticed, it involves quite extensive calculations and it's not very easy to apply. So it gives good results mostly with quite advanced laboratories because quite some knowledge is required. Deep knowledge and extra work is also usually required because specific experiments have to be carried out oftentimes to evaluate the uncertainty components. And if some uncertainty component is left out of consideration and if it is an important component, then there is always the danger to underestimate uncertainty. The same goes if some component is taken into consideration, but it is underestimated. But on the other hand, it gives a lot of information about your procedure and thereby promotes thinking about it. And also it has high value in teaching it is very good for students to see where the uncertainty actually comes from. And by this, this modeling approach stands out from all the others. Now, if we look at the single lab validation approach, then this should be fairly well suitable for routine laboratories who do not have time or competence for carrying out a lot of extra studies. Lots of data are needed, but large amount of that data comes automatically. So laboratories have to do validation of their procedures. Anyhow, they usually have to analyze certified reference materials anyhow, and they have to participate in interlaboratory comparisons anyhow. And all these data can directly be used in measurement uncertainty evaluation, so that all in all, less extra work is required. The data that automatically are available in the laboratory can be used directly. And the uncertainty estimates that are obtained are very realistic, so the uh, danger to underestimate measurement uncertainty is much lower. In fact, if the bias estimate is obtained from not very trustworthy sources, or if the reference values are not good enough, this approach can give you overestimated uncertainties. But of course, unfortunately, the teaching value of this approach is lower than of the modeling approach and it does not give much information about the procedure. And finally, the interlaboratory approaches, interlaboratory validation and proficiency testing approach, which I only briefly mentioned and for which I said that I do not really recommend them, these approaches in fact, do not need any knowledge and also no data for your own laboratory. But the uncertainties that they give are so crude that they can be used only as first estimates. And I would recommend to use them only in the case if you do not yet have the procedure set up in your laboratory and you would simply like to see what uncertainty you could expect. In all other cases, when you already have the procedure in your lab and you have data and you work with it, I strongly recommend not to use these, but to use either of these two approaches.